All right, guys, I'm sorry I couldn't be here today, but I'm going to try to teach you uh, lesson 4.8 through the video. So in, in section 8, we talk about the imaginary unit, I. Okay, so it's like the letter I, it's representing a number, sort of like pi, but not pi. Um, this number is known as a complex number, and it says whose square is negative 1. So I doesn't really exist in the real world by itself, but it does exist with a partner. So if you square I, you get a real number. So I squared is equal to negative 1. But I alone isn't a real number. It's complex. Um, it's also an imaginary number. So when you take I and you just were to try to find the value of it by itself, uh, that would just be the square root of negative 1. So if you're looking at other, <clears throat> other numbers who, who are negative and square rooted, those are going to have I's in them. So for example, if you just square root the negative 5, a calculator isn't going to be able to do this, and that's because it's not a real number. But we can write it as the square root of 5 times I, and that will allow us to do math with it. We will need to do math with it. It has significance. It's just difficult to do with uh, a calculator because the calculator doesn't know how to do imaginary things. So how I got this, we have the square root of 5 times the square root of negative 1. That's basically the square root of negative 5 like broken down into two different square roots. So the square root of 5 is the square root of 5. The square root of negative 1, that's what i is. Okay? So i is the square root of negative 1. Okay, so if we have the square root of 25, that broken down would be the square root of 25 and the square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So that would be 5i. And then to get the rest of these, you're basically just simplifying radicals. So the square root of 50, you some of you might have made like little trees with the square root of 50. Okay, you break that down into its prime factors. You just keep breaking it down until you can't anymore. Anything that you can make a group of two of comes out of the square root, and anything that you can't would stay in the square root. So two would be in the square root, five would be out of the square root. So the square root of 50 would just simplify to five root two. But since it's the square root of negative 50, this is gonna simplify to five i root two. Okay, or you could write five root two i. Now 72, we're going to do the same way. So 72 breaks up into 2 and 36. 36 is 6 and 6. Okay, so we can take the 6 out. We can leave the 2 in. And then we have i because it's a negative square root of 72. So instead of just getting 6 root 2, we have 6 i root 2 because it was a negative 72. Okay, um, We can add and subtract things. 2i, that would create... Uh, other complex numbers. A complex number is anything that can be written in this form. So even if a is 0, if there's an i involved in it, that's a complex number. Okay, so in example 1, we have two complex numbers and we're trying to subtract them. So we're going to subtract these like we would subtract kind of like things with x's in them. So if this said 2 plus 3x minus 3 minus 2x, that's how we're going to subtract it. So make sure you distribute the negative sign here. So that's the first step you do. Then you want to make sure that you combine like terms. So 2 and negative 3 are like terms, and when you combine them, you get negative 1. 3i and 2i are like terms. When you combine them, you get 5i. Okay, so that would be the difference of 2i, uh, 2 plus 3i and 3 minus 2i. I'll give you a minute to try the u-try. Now, when you find the product, you have to distribute. Okay, This is where it gets a little bit tricky. So uh, 7i times 2 is easy. That's just 14i. But 7i times 3i, that's going to be 21i squared. Now, if you recall from earlier, i squared is equal to something. It's equal to negative 1. So because i squared is negative 1, we can actually simplify this a little bit more. So we can simplify this to 14i minus 21 because the i squared is negative 1. So we would turn that into a negative 1. Okay. 
All right, now when we have the product of two binomials, we have to FOIL. So you're going to do 2 times 3, that's 6. You have 2 times 2i, that's negative 4i. 3i times 3, that's 9i. And then the last one, 3i times 2i, that's going to be 6, oh, sorry, that's going to be negative 6i squared. So it's negative because uh, this was a negative sign. Okay, so now we would have to simplify. So first things first, just combine those two together, you get plus 5i. Okay, next, make sure that you remember that i squared is negative 1. So turn i squared into negative 1. Now because this is negative 1, that's actually going to make that a positive 6. And so your final answer is 12 plus 5i. All right, I'll give you a second to do the U-try. Here you go, that's your U-try. Okay, now we're going to divide. So when you divide, you're not actually going to divide. What you're going to do is you're going to multiply by something to rationalize the denominator. We don't really care if the rest of it's rationalized, but we care if the denominator, denominator is rationalized. So I can't have an irrational number down here, and I is not only irrational, but it's not even real. To make it a real number or a rational number, I can just multiply by i, then it becomes a negative 1. But I can't just do that to the denominator, I have to also do it to the numerator. So I'm taking 5 plus 3i and multiplying it by i, and then the denominator I'm taking i and multiplying by i as well. So in the numerator I get 5 plus 3i squared, well actually sorry, 5i plus 3i squared. And then in the denominator, I get 2i squared. Okay, and this is good because i squared is negative 1. So turn both of those into negative 1s. And we get this. Okay, and then I'm fine if you leave it like that, but Math Excel wants you to write it in the form of a complex number, which is this. So you're going to write that as, so first you need to divide these guys, so that gives you negative 5i over 2 plus 3 over 2. And because we want the i second, we're just going to rearrange that. So 3 over 2 minus 5i over 2. So that would be in the form of a complex number. All right, pause the video again. Try the u-try. So when you do the u-try, you should get 7 thirds plus 2 thirds i. That's your final answer. If the denominator is a binomial, you can't just multiply by i, because that would get take care of this i, but then you'd have an i here with the 2. So what you have to do is multiply by the conjugate. So the conjugate basically looks just like this, but with a minus sign instead of a plus sign. Make sure you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. So watch what happens. So on top we have 5 plus 3i times 2 minus i. On the bottom, we have 2 plus i times 2 minus i. Now, in order for us to multiply these properly, we need to FOIL. So, 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times negative i is negative 5i. 3i times 2 is 6i. 3i squared times negative i, or I'm sorry, 3i times negative i is negative 3i squared. That's the numerator. In the denominator, we have 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 times negative i, that's negative 2i. i times 2, which is positive 2i. And i times negative i is negative i squared. Now when we simplify, these two go away. These two can be combined. So we get negative 10 minus 3i squared over 4 minus i squared. Now that can be simplified as well, because remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is really 10 plus 3 over 4 plus 1. And when you simplify that, you get 13 over 5. And that's it. Pause the video and do the U-try. 
Okay, so this is the solution to the U try, and I have to go back to the last example because I forgot something. So you might have noticed that. So <clears throat> uh, when I combined two I terms in the last example, I actually forgot to write that down. So these two combined to 7I. Um, let's go back a second. Okay, so go back to B. So I forgot to write down those two together. So it's not just 10 minus 3i squared, it's 10 minus 3i squared, and then these two together is just another little i. Okay, so the bottom, that part stays the same. So on top, we should have, since this is now positive 3, we should have 13 plus i over 4 plus 1, which is 13 plus i over 5. Okay, now in this you try, I put it as math Excel would like us to put it as, so in complex number form. So you're just dividing each, uh, each term in the numerator by the denominator, and I guess uh, put the i in front instead of on top. That's the complex number form. I personally don't care, so for a quiz or a test, if you want to just leave it like that, that's fine. But when you input it on math Excel, it needs it in this form in order to grade it properly. Okay, so the next examples um, we are going to do in class, but if you want to try it out now, go ahead. Uh, you would have to solve these using the quadratic formula, which we haven't really covered yet. So if you want to try it out using knowledge that you have from last year about the quadratic formula, I'll let you try it. Otherwise, just leave those alone, and we will go over those together tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.